Hello everyone, this video is all about screen space global illumination for Unity. We are on Mac OS and we are utilizing Unity 2021.3.3 F1. It's the most recent stable release of Unity at the time of this video. More videos like this will come in the future as we receive 2022 as a stable release and onward. And the reason why is if you're familiar with Unity as I am, you know that from release to release, Unity loves to change things around and move things from space to space, even things that don't need to be moved. Um, they like to keep us on, their, on our toes, I suppose. Uh, and so we're going to do our best to keep up. But we see you, Unity HQ. We see you. And we know what antics you're up to. So without any further ado, we're going to jump in. Let's create some screen space global illumination inside of the sample scene 3D project HDRP. This is what we will be utilizing. And so uh, I have a blank install uh, directly from Unity Hub. Um, I've already installed it. So go ahead and install it for yourself. You want this one, 3D sample scene. And once you have that installed, you'll be you'll see this familiar site. Well, not exactly, but you can navigate in the scene to get to this view. Any view you like, really. It's not important. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to take my face off the screen so we have an unobstructed view of the Unity interface. So with that said, bye face. Say goodbye face. Bye face. There we go. All right. Here we are in Unity. Step one to global illumination. We're going to go in with Unity selected. We're going to go to Edit and Project Settings. Within Project Settings, we're looking for the Graphics uh, tab. This will tell us which HDRP uh, asset we are utilizing. Of course, the, uh, the standard install as soon as you create a new project is this one, Default HDRP. RP asset. However, we need one more piece of information, and that is found in quality. Because this, the HDRP asset, the default HDRP asset, has three quality settings, high, medium, and low. In each of them, you can think of them as almost in this, um, I should say, you should think of them as distinct assets. I don't want to get too confusing, but basically whatever settings you set for the low quality will not affect medium or high. And here we can see that medium quality is set as the default green for both the Windows, Mac, and Linux uh, platforms, as well as the default for dedicated server. We don't need to worry about the platforms. All we need to know is that we are utilizing and working with medium quality. So with medium quality uh, um, recognized, we're going to do, uh, we're going to come into our project and we're going to type in uh, HDRP medium because we know that this is the one we're utilizing. This is the, uh, because it is set as the, uh, the asset in use, it is the one affecting our scene. So highlight it in the project window. And within your inspector, I want you to scroll down until you find the lighting section. And then within lighting, here we have screen space global illumination. We're going to tick this box, turning it on. Now, you'll notice there's no change in the scene. That's because when we tick screen space global illumination to be on, what we are telling Unity is that we wish to have the ability to utilize screen space global illumination. In order for us to see it in our scene, we have to add a volume, which we can just do by right click and hierarchy, scroll down to volume, add a global volume. I'm going to name this global volume, global illumination volume. And new volumes require a profile. Every time you create a new volume, it does not have one. So we're going to come over, click new. That applies a profile. 
we're going to add an override. This override is going to be global screen space global illumination. Now, we're going to go ahead and tick all. That turns everything on. This is tricky because enable has a tick mark next to it, as does every other setting, and yet there's no change to our scene. That's because Unity does a bizarre thing. I haven't found a val uh, like a, a meaningful reason for it, but there is a second unchecked tick box next to enable. I want you to tick that on. Ooh, did you see that change in our scene? Off. On. Ooh, that's nice. Okay, that's great. We have global illumination is working within our scene. That's beautiful. Go ahead and take a look at uh, a handful of things that are happening. If we look at where my mouse is, if you see the uh, texture of the wall, we can see the texture, but it's kind of flat-ish. But what happens when we turn screen space on? global illumination. Do you see how that texture just pops a little more? And we can certainly see the change on the uh, stair stepping of this wall. Now, there are multiple ways of turning screen space global illumination on and off. Of course, we can utilize this second checkbox. We can also just turn the component off and on at the master level right here. We can also, uh, with our global illumination volume, we can just turn the volume off and on. They're going to have the roughly the same effects. But um, let's navigate through our scene and, and look at all the other changes. Now, if you've ever had an issue of like trying to scroll through Unity and uh, it's fast at first, but then slows down, um, I do have another video on that phenomenon specifically. But right now, it's enough to tell you that if you hold down your right mouse button and you use the WASD keys, you can fly through your scene much like a first person camera would uh, within a game environment. And it'll always be very quick and responsive. Also, if it's too quick and responsive, then while you're holding down that right button, you can scroll your, uh, your center mouse wheel and you'll notice that you have a, fa uh, a speed factor. So I'm just going to scroll using the uh, A and D keys to go side to side. And you can see that as that number is really low, 0 0.001, it's a slow move. But as I, ooh, that's really fast. But as you dial that up, your speed increases. Ooh, there we are. So very nice. All right, so now we're back where we want to be. And we are looking at, uh, this little, uh, the wall and column, if you're confused as to where I am, I'm right next to the butterfly cage. All right. So I'm going to, uh, I've got my global illumination volume selected. I'm going to turn screen space global illumination off. And I want to point out a few direct things. I want you to look at this shadow created by this column. Right now, that shadow is created directly by the sunlight. So the, the light comes through the sunlight, it's blocked by the column, and it creates a rather distinct hard shadow. Now, when we turn screen space global illumination on, what's happening is the light from this skylight is coming down. It's still being blocked by the column. However, what's also happening is the light that is hitting this wall is spilling back onto the back side of this column and then back onto this wall. That softens the shadow, creates a more realistic effect. So let's toggle it back and on and off for us to see. This is with global illumination on, and this is without. So off, just look at this shadow. That's all I want you to focus out. We're gonna look at other things in specific as well. So off, on, off, and on. Now let's look at something else. Let's look at this wall. Now with screen space global illumination off, you can see the texture in this green paint and in the stucco or whatever this material is. You can see the modeling 
in the uh, in the the changes in in color and hue and tone. But with screen space global illumination on, do you see how the specularity increases? Everything becomes more pronounced. Light is interacting with the material in a more realistic manner. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. I love it. That's without. This is with. Without, no real specularity, very uh, mild difference, and that's with it on. Great specularity, much, uh, much a difference. Now we can also see really nice uh, things happening here on the columns. So let's take a look at this. Here's HDRP without global illumination, and you can see that the front of this column, which is directly facing the skylight, is significantly brighter than the side of the column which is facing us, facing our camera. The same is true for the uh, ceiling architecture. This face is far closer and far more in a direct line to the skylight than the underside. But when we turn screen space global illumination on, how beautiful. It's not just the full front of this architecture that's being lit. It's the part that's being that's directly in line with the skylight, but there's a fall off, there's a natural gradient. You can see the texturing and the imperfections in the surface. Off and on. Now look at the underside of this uh, architecture. It's, you know, there, there's a slight grad gradation. Uh, it's not bad. But there's a lot of light hitting it. But when we utilize global illumination, then you can see that there's a, we get a distinct line of delineation between light and shadow. That's there's some tremendous stuff happening. I want to show you before we dip out of this video. Uh, we're going to fly in here, and I want to look at. There we are. I'm going to center in on this plant here. We are going to uh, zoom in. There we are. We're getting uh, fairly nice and close. Close props. I'm going to uh, highlight my global illumination setting again so that we have the uh, settings here in the um, uh, in the inspector. So without global illumination and with it, just a nice little subtle change. Let me find a, an angle. Because sometimes you you will uh, find subtleties uh, from uh, from area to area, uh, and it's all about um, you know it's not always going to be a lot of stuff happening all at once. But you can see that there's a, a little bit of difference happening here. So off and on. You see it in the shadows. You see it in the room in general. Without it. Light's just kind of going every which way. There's not a realistic fall off as one would hope. But with it, look at the gradation. Above the lights, super dark. These lights providing a little bit, a lot down here. This is mainly where they're hitting. And then this ambient light is hitting this wall. Without it, it's more uniform. It's more flat. But hey, look at that. It's just a nice tool tip to have in your arsenal. That's screen space global illumination for HDRP. I hope that you find this useful. Again, uh, this is all about uh, screen space global illumination for HDRP in Unity 2021.3.3 F1. You can likely find settings similar to this in other unity uh, versions but if you don't it's not you you're not dumb they move things around just to be tricky it's likely to be true for 2022 as well so that what i'll probably do is come back and make another video on global illumination when we get to 2022 as a stable release right now it's in beta that means they are still moving things around and things probably just don't work yet, as they should, but they will. I hope you found this helpful. I hope you found this useful. I'm excited for you to, to utilize 
uh, screen space global illumination in your own projects. What's it going to be? Is it going to be a game? Is it going to be a VR environment? Is it going to be a VR kind of like a gathering space, like a community kind of interactive kind of a thing? What are you going to create? What are you making with Unity? And how are you going to use screen space global illumination? In it? I'm excited to see it because uh, I'm excited to show you the things that I'm currently building that I soon hope to release in the next year. More than that, I'm excited about what you are going to create because how are you going to find fulfillment for yourself, not only in experiencing the things that I and others create, but how are you going to find your own fulfillment as a creator by making things for us and for yourself? I'm excited to try them out. I want to get my hands in them. I want to experience your, your mind. What are you creating? I think that's an exciting thing. So I'm excited for you. I'm excited for me. I'm excited for all of us. Uh, that's it for this video. If you have thoughts, if you have questions, hit me up in the comments. I don't read every comment, just FYI. I am a tiny channel, so I'm not going to get a lot of comments, but I want to say I have a much healthier mental health outlook the less that I engage in social media. So I'm here to be useful. I'm here to discover things and learn for myself and I'm help. I'm here to help you learn. But uh, beyond that, you probably won't see much of me outside of these videos themselves. So that's it. Wrapping things up. We're done. We're done. Goodbye. Goodbye.